Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Tanya Talks. I'm your host, Tanya Ricketts, and I'm joined today by our guest, Miranda McDonald and Tara Rhodes. So welcome, ladies. Thank you for having us. Yes, it's going to be a nice one as we talk about control. Just before we begin, though, I just want to uh, let you, the audience know today who you guys are and what you're about. And they are, Tara and Miranda are certified coaches. And they also have a podcast that I want everybody to check out and listen to. And it is TaraMiranda.com. And Tara, you can find uh, Miranda or connect with Miranda through TaraMiranda.com and also TaraRhodes.ca. So um, they work together, they're partnered together. So where you find one, you find the other, <laughs> <laughs> it's, so true. it's so true you don't know how true that is <laughs> <laughs> so I am um, just going to really ask the question because really in this you know pre-COVID times we started out this whole pre-COVID where we all were living life and we thought we were in control and you know we were busy and everything else and then all of a sudden COVID happens and it's not necessarily about COVID, but it was really the underlying tone that we didn't realize how much out of control we really were in versus being in control. So I'm um, looking forward to hearing your perspective and sharing with us in the audience really what that redefining control looks like. So who wants to start with us today? I'll start. All um, right. This is such a loaded topic, isn't it? Because I think we deal with a lot of high achievers. We deal with a lot of people who are just like, I like things in a row. I like schedules. These, there's an, there always has to be an outcome. There's something that I'm working towards that I can do, that I can make happen, that I can change. And COVID turned that fully upside down. Because even though we knew, I think, that, that we weren't in control anyway, it just really magnified the fact that it's not true at all. Uh, and, you know, we came together a while back to try to explore some of this stuff. Like we want to live in a world where people know themselves, they understand their impact, the relationships that they have and our leaders in their lives. And about a year ago, this topic came up around control. Like we heard the word a lot, like we've been doing workshops, just our own ideas about what that looks like. And the topic of redefining it came up as we were exploring it because obviously COVID, um, but it really started to stir up this idea of, ah, like I need to have it, why don't I have it? And so we wanted to redefine it. And for us, what it means really is we only have control over ourselves, mm. our thoughts, our words, our actions, and that's about it. And the sooner that you can embrace that fact <laughs> as well as I guess redefine what it looks like for you in that because it's going to look different for everybody um, but know that it's just about how you show up every day and mm -hmm. how you impact other people the rest of it is an exercise in letting go right <laughs> I just said I just did a post on that <laughs> letting go you're not yeah. alone I think you know that's one of the things that I was shocked about at the beginning I saw all these people who were like, I have all the extra time. I'm going to learn a new course. I'm going to learn how to bake bread. I'm going to learn how to become this. I'm going to, you know, do all of these things. And I just was like, what, why, what, like, I just, I felt really inadequate actually. Like I, it actually prompted me to be, I don't even want to be on social media because I'm feeling so bad about myself. Mm. That was a trigger for me. Mm -hmm. Miranda, what about you? I know I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me, the um, social media was definitely at the beginning a, a tough spot for me to be in. And I've taken a bit of a hiatus from it because it, it was, it was very bombarding and people sort of desperately trying to control their surroundings, their environment and, and their ability to feel successful. And yeah, I, I definitely went in the opposite. I felt like I went in the opposite direction a little bit at the time, just to be like, no more of this. It feels hectic. It feels like a hustle. I don't feel safe or grounded when I'm thinking that way. And so, yeah, it's, it's become a really important topic for both Tara and I to explore. And I think when we started to put those thoughts out there in the world, we got a lot of really great feedback from people who were like, yes, can we talk about this? Can we have this conversation? So it's really became, become central to our 
thoughts right now and a lot of the content that we're putting out. Good. And, and, and I think it's so important because I know for myself who, you know, for, for my own reasoning of always being in control, the idea of surrendering and letting go and trusting, um, trusting that I could let go and that life would take care of me if I wasn't in control was a big step for me. Um, the fear associated with stopping and st uh, to stop trying to control the narrative and to stop looking to be one step ahead or planning the next move. And if I wasn't in that space to do that, I felt out of control, but I was already out of control <laughs> because I was controlling everything. I was tired, I was exhausted, I, I was mentally on overload, probably functioning depressed, you know, depressed person at the same time, anxious all the time, worried all the time, because I was constantly adding onto my plate in order to control the narrative. Isn't that the irony of it all, right? We reach for control and it's the, it's the thing we don't, we get less of. It's right. The, the feeling we actually get less of when we try to get it um, and, and do all the things, like you said, adding to that list. Right. That resonates with me so much. Um, I remember probably way before coaching, but when I started coaching about eight years ago, it's when the stark difference of how you can show up in your life and how I was showing up in my life. <laughs> just like flashing lights in my face. Um, I was that person who would get so upset at being in traffic. Hmm. Like I can do anything about traffic in Toronto at 8.30 AM, <laughs> right? Like, and I would sit there, I would sit in my car and I would be like, oh, why? Oh, so frustrating. I remember like those things and they're so little, like they seem little, but they add up. It's like, oh, right. this person was late to this meeting. Why were they late? Right. That person was doing this. This person's doing that. And I was spending so much energy on what other people were doing mm -hmm. rather than just taking control of my own environment. And when I say that, for those of you who are like oh, skeptical, we're not saying ignore what's going on outside, but that the control is all within your control of how you take care of yourself, how you set yourself up for success in a day, um, the things that you're doing to make sure that you're of right mind, that you have taken care of yourself, all of those things that seem so like, oh, it's too easy to do that. Simple, not easy. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, one of the things that we talked about in a workshop that we did a while back was Focus is really about where you put your attention, or sorry, not focus, control is really about where you put your attention. Like it's what you are focused on that allows you to feel that sense of control and not control. And if you're deciding to focus on all the things that are not in your realm of control, then you're going to feel out of control a lot of the time. And it's the releasing the expectation of whatever it is. I think expectations have a lot like, you know, Tara, when you talk about being in traffic and it's 8 30 in the morning and it's that expectation in that moment of what you're expecting versus just being present and allowing that moment to be that moment you're simply in traffic um, yeah not attaching anything to the moment i think and, yeah as a, if anyone has ever done an enneagram like i'm an enneagram too classic helper. I want everyone to be okay. I will put everybody before myself. Um, and so I have high expectations of how people are going to respond back because <laughs> I'm like that. I'm a greater good person. And so it's a recipe for resentment. Yes. <laughs> yes. 100%. Because people, not most people will not show up and mirror back to you what you've put out there it will come back I always say to people it comes back just you know it has to come back what you put out there it's coming from you and that goodness coming from you has to come back I'm into the quantum and metaphysics of it all of that emotion that feeling and when you feel good about it it sends a signal to the brain it sends that you know 
the the antennas and that spark goes off and sends that wave out into the universe and it comes back to you it just doesn't really come back the expectations as you said it doesn't come back from the people that you expect it from <laughs> and you set those high expectations it does yeah. it just comes back from the people that you least expected however what i say to people all the time it comes back better than you expected mm. just not from the people you expect it from yeah and it's it's such a another lesson in where we put our focus right because if you're always focused on the people who aren't doing it the way you would want to do it who aren't serving you or aren't helping you then you're going to miss and it goes back to the presence thing you were talking about you're going to miss all of the people who who maybe are because right. you're so focused on what's lacking that scarcity mindset and then you you end up feeling you, yeah it, it changes your physiology because mm -hmm. you're focused on what's not happening as opposed to where is the gift coming from where is that blessing coming from right right i love it i love it it, it, it what's resonating with me when you said that is again and we're in the middle of a pandemic and i have you know, individuals around me that have been impacted in a, in a negative way with this whole COVID situation, losing jobs. And they're used to being in control. And for the first time, they're not in control. They don't know where their dollars coming from. And I just said, surrender. I said, life knows how to take care of itself. And that was a big concept for me to understand that life knows how to take care of itself. So why am I looking to control everything? What I said, look, if you're still in that moment, something will show up. You'll be nudged along the way, but we're not still, we're so busy controlling. We're not present, we're not still, and we're not allowing things to show up for us in our life for us to take advantage of. I feel like that someone needs to tweet that or- What? <laughs> that was very profound. <laughs> what? I have to remember what I said. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll watch go back. it back. We'll, we'll go back, back to the recording. Yeah. <laughs> But it's so true. It's, oh, I think for me, the way that shows up for me is I believe in miracles. There's like mm -hmm. a, there's a percentage for me that you just, I believe you have no control over anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so you have to let go to let it in because otherwise you're just fighting it and resisting it. And yeah, it's, uh, it's hard, but I find when I can do that, so many wonderful things happen and come out of unexpected places. Well, from a physical perspective, when you feel the level of surrender, when you're not, when you're in control, when, when we do muscle testing on individuals, and I say to people all the time, pay attention to the words you're using, the feelings you're having and what your body's feeling, because it's an indicator, it's intelligent. We have an intelligent system. And when we are in control of everything, our bodies are tense. So when you think about energy and water flowing through, it's not able to flow through freely because there's tension, but all of a sudden you surrender and something cosmically opens up and your soul, it just surrenders to the unknown. It, it actually says, I trust. I trust that I'm taking care of. I trust that the greater good is going to come, come to me. And it always does. Yeah. I feel like you're talking Miranda's language. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, it's, there's such a like uh, visual that I have in my head because it's like the source of everything is in me mm -hmm. and it's out there. Right. And so when you open up, you connect it. It's like, it's, right. I just feel this like energy field, this like light that comes shooting through me and connects to it. And mm -hmm. it's, it, that is, when you're talking about opening it up, that's, that's, that's what I see. That's what I feel is you are letting whatever's in you that is the most beautiful, perfect thing. And it's, you're amplifying it. Right. Um, but you have, but you're right. It's that the surrender, it's such a charged word, right? Like it, I feel the like emotional charge of it because it's beautiful. There's something really oh, like an exhale. About you're that breathing, word. Right. Yes. You're letting it all go. Tara, you said you have to let it go. It's like, I surrender. I let it go. I, I, I surrender it. I always say, I, I, I use this analogy all the time. I say, when I'm in control, for anybody that's watched this, I believe that, you know, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all will be added to you. To me, that study thyself, know thyself, and unlock the window to your soul. And I always imagine God sitting with a big bowl of popcorn. 
watching me being in control and working, you know, doing his job for him, you know, controlling everything. God's like, wow, let me see how this movie's going to play out. And then when you surrender and it happens, God like puts the popcorn down. He's like, oh, good time you give me my job back. And I'm like, you know, I tell people all the time, I do such a crap job doing God's job. Why wouldn't I just leave it to him to do? (laughs) (laughs) Yes, there's just, I think the myth of control, like it's such a myth around you can try to make everyone yourself I had said this in one of the episodes we were talking about uh, this season because we're, we're exploring this topic for the whole season of our podcast and it's like when I'm trying to control everybody everything I want them to be like me I'm trying to make everybody like me I'm trying to make them believe the things that I believe I'm trying to make them do the things that I would do it's taking away that other people have different strengths different personalities I've fully cut off my curiosity about the other person who's sitting in front of me and potentially something that I can learn from Mm -hmm. them, not just a new skill or a new tool or something that I wasn't aware of, but also about myself. Mm -hmm. There's something that that is unveiled every day. And I do this work all day. Like I'm into (laughs) leadership development and growing. And, you know, if you cut yourself off to that, your life doesn't get any brighter. It's, Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I know myself by the time I'm 20. No, you don't. You just don't. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm. <laughs> my kids call me ancient. They call me vintage, actually. Let me rephrase Oh, that. that's ancient. a better word than ancient. I like vintage. I'm vintage. <laughs> so, and I still have a lot to learn in my vintage <laughs> self. <laughs> yeah, I think our souls are here to learn something Mm -hmm. through us. Like we're the, we're the human, but that part of us that's connected to, you know, it's here to learn something. And yeah, when, when we resist all of the beautiful things going on around us and all of the tough, uncomfortable things going on around us, we're, we're taking that gift, that gift away, that learning away from what we're here to do. We're here to learn. Right. Absolutely. It's interesting. The two things that come to my mind are, you know, giving and receiving. And um, when we're in control, what we're saying is that we do not have the ability to receive. And I just, uh, I made a big note about it because it was something I found myself saying over and over again, the last couple of weeks was the most unselfish thing we can do is learn how to receive. And that means that we have to surrender control on what it is that we're receiving. Um, energy goes through one hand and comes out the other. And you have one hand to give, one hand to 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 receive, whichever way it goes. I don't know which way it goes. Um, and I find that when you're in control of everything, you actually stop the movement of energy to flow in a fluid just just to circulate. So and you know, here's what I want to make sure that I everybody understands it's not that you take a passive role and you don't do anything there's a detachment from it so when you're controlling a situation the expectations Tara as you said there's an expectation so you're doing something with this expectation that you're going to be set up for failure because you're going to be disappointed every single time but when you're doing something with that level of detachment from it then you allow as you say Miranda you just allow the learning and the experiences and the beauty to just surface right in front of you. Yeah. The other word I like to use in place of detachment as well, like in addition to Mm -hmm. is like non-judgment. Yes. Yes. It's like the, the, whatever it is, is here. It's here. It's your reality, right? Like there's Mm -hmm. something happening to you right now. Mm -hmm. And when you put a story on it, when you put a judgment on top of it, that's when you're attached to it. Right. (laughs) You've now like, you know, grip, your, your grip around it is tighter because right. you're, ju- you're judging it. But when you let go of it and you just get curious about it, Ooh, what's that? I what, love curious. <laughs> what's my, yeah. It, it, that's the, that's what, how the opening happens. It's like, let go of the judgment of what's going on and get curious about what you might, what might, you might be able to glean from it. Mm-hmm. Smartly said. <laughs> Aren't we so smart? (laughs) 
you know, I, I, I want to touch upon this uh, little piece and that is, Tara, you brought it up with, you know, that individual you're, you're working to get them to be you. Mm -hmm. And I remember as I started to get more into the spiritual work and deeper into understanding it, and our job is to be able to live from a higher place of love and gratitude on this, on this earth. And I found that there's a lot of resistance and it's not only just us looking for them to be us, it's us not knowing how to receive love and to receive gratitude. It's a really deep concept um, that I, I lose people <laughs> when I explain it. So I'm doing my very best to, to navigate through this one. The idea is to spend your time learning how to how to interact with people from a place of truth and self-love of you. So it's about being in alignment with the truth of who you are. And when you can be in alignment with the truth of who you are, all those people that you are with, you won't have an expectation because you will be too busy offering the truth of who you are sharing that piece of who you are yeah I mean you're that makes perfect sense to me so you didn't lose me (laughs) Um, (laughs) we are constantly dancing around this how do you show up however wherever you need to show up as you the real you not the masks and the stories that you've been told to be the actual beautiful person that you are. And I would add to that the greater good, which requires us to be the bigger person. And I think that is where most people have the problem of letting go because you are going to have people who yell at you. You are going to have people who disagree. You are going to have people who you know, disparage you online, et cetera. I could keep going. I mean, we live in 2021. This has been probably, I would say the ugliest year, just ugly, not from what's going on in our pandemic world, but just people are at a low of, I want to blame somebody because that's all they have control over, or at least that's what they feel they have control over. So a lot of name calling, a lot of like, but it's their fault. It's not my fault. Trying to like push it onto other people. But then we lose our personal power. Yep, exactly. So it's really, you're actually letting go of your control when you're doing that because it, yeah, you have, you're, you're putting it on other people rather than how do I want to be right now? Like, would I want someone to do that to me? And maybe some people do, like, I don't want to speak for everybody. (laughs) Um, But for the ones who really want to show up in a better way, for the ones who um, want to have a positive impact on other people. Yeah. We're being called to Uh, for a higher purpose. We're being called to be better than everybody else. And that's radical. Mm -hmm. I feel that once you come to a place of knowing thyself more deeply, you're Mm -hmm. just, there are a few things that happen. And number one, uh, not, not in a, and not in order, but there are a few things that happen when you really come to a place where you know thyself, you're just it's like beads of water when somebody comes to you. It just doesn't stay. It doesn't penetrate anything. It just kind of rolls off. Because um, you're, you're solid in the truth of who you are. In addition to that, when you come to knowing that deeper part of who you are and you, and you live from that emotional state of the truth of who you are, you actually don't attract people that reflect that. You actually exist as that reflection of the energetic feeling on the inside. Um, and I look at people when people are picking fights with me or saying stuff, I look at them and I actually say to them that, and this is, I guess, my control because I'm just not in control of them. As you guys said earlier on, we're not in control of the thinking, but I always let them know, I'm not going to engage with the fight that you have going on in your mind. I'm just not going to participate with it. And it's, empowering for me because then it doesn't I love myself that much that I'm not going to put my energy into that and distort my cells because I deal with it on all levels mentally emotionally spiritually physically and I'm distorting my cells when I engage in that 
act of lack of self-love. Mm. Trying to gain control by proving my point or getting my point across. My body's tense. Yeah. And just, I won't do it. I love myself way too much to do it. <laughs> and how long did it take you to get there? Um, I, I, I'm not sure. I think it's, I, I say to people, I've been, I, I was, I was an interesting individual. I've been on this path since I was in my preteens. I was studying mm -hmm. Zen and Buddhism, just trying to figure out and make peace in my life as to why I was homeless, why I was everything and yeah. I couldn't figure it out. So I've been on this journey for quite some time. Um, I think when I started to understand that my narrative was don't exist, um, you know, the environment that I came from was don't exist. I was existing in a world that said don't exist. And I was always fighting with somebody because I was fighting to exist. Right. And when I came to that realization, and again, I don't know when, I don't know if it was 10 years ago, 20 years ago, if it was last, yesterday, I, I, I just know that I just got to a place where my soul was tired of the feeling. I think when your soul gets tired of that feeling mm -hmm. and you stop fighting for yourself, and again, the surrender, where I just surrender to the fact that I'm existing. And I decided that this is what I wanted for myself. And I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't understand how I was going to exist. I didn't know what it looked like. Mm -hmm. My entire narrative was don't exist. But I knew in my heart that I felt on a deep emotional level that I was ready. I was ready to exist. And then it just started to maneuver and life started to readjust. And I had to be still and let go of a lot of things in order to be able to recognize when life was showing up saying, I need you to exist right now. Mm. Yeah, that's beautiful. What a, what a very, very beautiful story that is. Um, and I, I feel that everybody is there. Yeah. Something that is, has been popping into my mind as you both have been speaking about this, um, being accepting yourself fully right mm -hmm. without judgment that self-love piece and showing up at your you know at your most brightest at your best at your fullest there's oftentimes we it and, and you also said be still and i think that's one of the hardest things for us as human beings to do is be still with ourselves right and and listen right? Listen to what's going on because I think there's so much information. Your body and your soul and your mind are giving you so much information all the time about what is required of you, what you are being called to. And, but we're not still enough to hear it. We often don't get still enough to hear it. And I think, you know, one of the things that we, one of the pieces of information that we can tap into that is happening to us all the time is our emotions. Mm -hmm. It's such a, clear beautiful piece of information that if we listen to it and don't judge it and get curious about oh I'm feeling this thing right now what's what am I being what is my soul calling me to be right now because it's feeling this thing um, I, I think we could make better choices we could be in more control we would make much better choices about how to show up if we were still with ourselves more often yeah, I think part of that self-love piece is appreciating all that you are, mm, yes. right? Like we all have stories, some true, some not, but we have stories and we come from different backgrounds and we have different ways of looking at the world. And instead of, you know, getting upset at why you're upset, just appreciating that you're upset. Mm -hmm. And you may have some work to do in that vein. Like that might be a recurring theme for you. The, the, what you're upset about or angry about or frustrated about, right? I know those are the lessons that keep coming up for me every so often. Um, and it's information. It's not about judging. It's just being able to name it and get curious about where it's coming from. Because I think we take a lot of it at face value Mm -hmm. uh, that person made me mad. Yeah. It's their fault. 
that I'm mad. It's actually not. It's most likely related to something that you have not resolved from way back in your past somewhere. They just triggered how they triggered what you believe about yourself. Yep. That's all it is. They brought it to. I'm listening to the two of you use the words cur- curio- like you're curious and curiosity is a great place to be because there is no judgment. There's no det- attachment to it. It's just a level of, it's playful. I like fun. Anybody knows me, I like fun <laughs> and it has to be playful for me and exciting and an adventure. So it's like, if we take it from that, it becomes, all right, what are we going to discover today? What are we going to find out? All right. So I'm mad and I'm angry and I'm this, and where is it coming from? Well, let's, let's explore it. What I know is that your body is so intelligent that it's always looking to come to a healthier place if we'll allow it. So when that emotion is coming up, I call it emotional plaque. That emotional plaque, it's being, it's being picked out and it's surfacing because it wants to come out. It wants to detox. That unhealthy thought, that unhealthy feeling, all that stuff, it wants to detox. So let it come out, like embrace it, enjoy it. Be like, yes, I'm angry. This is why I'm angry. It's coming out. Like it's not taking residency up in my soul and in my spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that's where, you know, it's not just about that because you are going to have to do something about it. You are going to have to say something. You are going to have to explore it. Mm -hmm. And that's usually, so first it's going wrong with the judgment in it. But then you're unleashing all of that unworked stuff on other people. And Mm -hmm. that's not healthy. Right. Like it's all not healthy, but Mm -hmm. especially when you're taking it out on others. Uh, And it's not to say, because I was that person for sure. (laughs) Taking it out on others. Welcome to the club. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And I would justify it with, you don't know me. You don't get me. You don't understand and that's not, I mean, that may be true, but that's not why I'm unleashing. Like mm-hmm. it's something that's my stuff. It's not theirs. Yeah. That's a very challenging place to be though, too, when you have to confront you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, it's a, it's a, it can be a mess. Like it can be a complete mess. I know that for <laughs> myself. Like we, we often talk about, um, this idea this concept of like a a storm a stormy first draft is one way you can say it i don't know if anyone any of your listeners are are brene brown fans but this is something that she references all the time and uh just allowing yourself like you said tanya allowing yourself to be messy but not as tara said on somebody else absolutely yes don't be messy on somebody else but but allow yourself to be messy and so you know, it, however you like to express, like for me, it's writing. Oftentimes I like to just like scribble all the mess down and then sort through it later, you know, pick out the parts that feel true, pick out the parts that feel the most resonant for me, but I can't get there until I've just word vomited on a page. Oh, I'm with you. I'm an avid journaler. I have rubber made bins downstairs in my oh, basement. Yeah. <laughs> of years of journaling I anybody knows that they have to get me something get her a journal she she writes I write all like all the time yeah it's a great way if you're an external processor like me like I do like to verbally process things and Tara would we can can account for this I have <laughs> processed with her many a time um but it's it's a permission thing I will ask her I need to process something I need to vent is that okay with you and then she'll say yeah that, let's do this so I can do that verbally with her, but when I don't always have that access to do that verbally with somebody, um, I need another outlet and writing is a great one. Nice. Yes, you need trusted people in your squad, on your squad. Um, safe, split, safe, safe place. <laughs> yeah, this work is not for the faint of heart. And yes, I am using the word work. It is, it is, it is not work. easy to get to go through all of this stuff. And so, the more people that you've got to stay accountable to that is on the same journey as you uh, that can help you there. There's also professional help in those areas. Like we're coaches, coaches are fabulous. There's also therapists, like all of that. If you have access to them, highly recommend because I find it really helpful to talk to someone who knows nothing about me. Absolutely. (laughs) And they can offer from, they have no investment in my life. I mean, they want me to have a better life 
they don't really care if I do it. They or don't not. know your story. So they have no prejudgments and pre-filters as to yeah. you're, you're showing up for who you are in that moment, the day you land on their chair in their chair, that's who they know you as nothing more than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's important to stock your squad up. Mm -hmm. So that you can do that. And um, I would say, cause we both experience this and I don't know if you do Tanya too. Um, my husband, like I can't coach my husband. <laughs> He won't let me, first of all, but like it, it becomes awkward. The line is a little bit blurred. So I can't always use him as my outlet either. So knowing who those people are, are super important. And like Miranda said, asking for permission, because sometimes we're just friends. Sometimes we're actually coaching each other. Sometimes we're doing a podcast. There's like different hats, different roles that we play, but making sure that it's clear is, is helpful so that I'm not commiserating with her. Like if she's working through something, I don't want to be like, me too, me too. Do you want to hear what I did too? That's totally my story. Then I'm, then I'm taking over the story. Right, right. Yeah. So you're showing up and giving somebody the space that belongs exclusively to them it's and a, helping yeah. them work through that process um, of that. And I think that that's fabulous. There aren't enough of us. I want to touch on the spouse bit because um, I just put a post out um, calling on couples on how they take care of one another and sharing the successes of the relationships and what makes the relationship successful because relationships are very complex. Mm -hmm. And you know we're looking to extract something from our partner that we're actually not capable of receiving. So oh, say more about that, please. Mm, yeah. Well, I, we're, <laughs> So our partner actually is a deeper reflection of our value and worth. It's the truest, truest expression of what we believe we're worth through this partnership. And ultimately your partner, I feel, you know, again, this is just, I always say to people, when I say things, it doesn't make it gospel. It's just my process mm -hmm. of going through it. And your partner becomes your ultimate best friend that you live with and you get to experience this life with on earth. And the challenge is, how do we become that? And the work doesn't lie in your partner, the work lies in you. And that is being able to know thyself. It is really a lot of, I, I am amazed at how many people look to control their spouses, but they actually don't even understand what works for them, what feeds them, what they value what the purpose of the relationship is yeah. like there are components that you haven't even done the work on yourself to to do but yet you're looking to extract something from a partner that you don't even know what you're looking to receive oh absolutely how many people do you know who go to couples counseling or couples therapy for the purpose of you fix him or you fix her <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, ah, you have, like, I know this isn't possible for everybody, but I, I highly recommend that if you're going to go to couples therapy, have your own therapist as well, not available to Absolutely. everybody, yes. but do your own work because you can't right. come together and create a strong partnership if you're not doing your own work. I completely agree with you. So here's what it comes down to at the end of the day, when you learn to wholeheartedly fall in love with you. We hear it all the time. Oh, you have to love yourself first. It's not as easy as it sounds. When you can have that feeling that, you know, people want that romance. Oh, I want somebody to deeply fall in love. When you can look at yourself in the mirror and feel it on such an, a level of passion and, and, and passion for you, where you look in that mirror and you're like, God, Tara, I love me. <laughs> like, you know, Miranda, I'm so in love with me. When you can really fall in love with you, oh my gosh, that emotion sends it out that you have to get love back the way you want it to because you've fallen in love with every aspect of who you are, your voice, your heart, your personality, your character. And understanding, it's so important to understand what you value, you know, what, what works for you? How 
when you're being fed in this way, like you're a plant, when you're being watered, this is what makes me grow. We don't know what to say. We're just blaming our spouses for everything they're not. Yeah. But we haven't figured out what it is that we want. <laughs> well, I mean, before we even get into relationship, <laughs> nobody knows what they want. Right. We have not been taught to be, it, it's, we've been taught to be that way selfishly. I want cars and I want money and I want a career that does that. And all of those things are fine if that's what you're into. Like, I'm not judging any of that. But we have taken on this outward um, definition of success. And we've internalized it, especially those of us who live in like Western culture. It's everywhere. We're supposed to want these things. We're supposed to want more. Your and identity we don't, is wrapped around it. Right. And we don't take the time to slow down and actually figure it out because in general here, by the time you're 18, there's a certain path you should be on. There are steps mm. and they tell you, and if you don't do that, you are not going to be successful. You're not going to be able to have a life that you want. And so we're focused on the outward for about 20 years of our life <laughs> and we don't slow down. And I would say, I think one of, that's one of the ways that this has shown up in the pandemic People do not like to be alone with their thoughts. <laughs> I can't go out to eat. I can't travel. I can't go to the movies. I can't be distracted for two hours. It's, it's because hearing the voices inside your head is difficult. And if you've never done it before, it can be loud <laughs> and really unnerving. Mm -hmm. Because where do we put our energy right now? There's nothing to distract us other than what's on our TV most of the right. time. And after a while, that doesn't fulfill you. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not the best self-care tool. <laughs> well put. Very diplomatic way of saying that, yes. Right, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Although, again, not demonizing television. I love movies. I love it. But it's, are you doing it to check out? Or are you doing it to energize you? It's a very different mm -hmm. reason. Well, yeah, listen, if, if you are quiet for a second and your, your soul is screaming at you, that's great information yes. for what you might need to do next. Like I would say if you're doing, if you have been on a consistent path of doing this kind of work, of loving yourself and, and accepting who you are and finding out who you are and expressing those things, if you've been on this consistent path, chances are when you quiet down, it's going to be kind of pleasant. It's going to be kind of like, huh, I'm content. Not to say all the time, but generally speaking, you'll feel that more often than not. Mm -hmm. But if you quiet down and, you've, and you are scared <laughs> because of what you're sitting with, that's hard, but it's, it's a really great starting place to go, okay, I think this is the this is the first step. This is the moment where I can start to do this work and get that feeling of true control, not the artificial control that we have all been reaching for. So what's the idea then of uh, control? Redefining control looks like? So one, get to know yourself. Like just start there. Even if you like take a personality test online, like if that's where you want to start, it's a really great place to just read through what a quiz tells you and get curious about what you find out. Um, there's some really great ones. 16personalities.com is a free one. Um, I mentioned Enneagram before. There's like a VIA character strengths test. That's free as well. Um, and just learn about yourself. I want to, because we think we know, and I, I'm turning 40 this year, and I, you'd think I would know who I am really well. Um, but I did this test this year, the VIA character strengths, and it told me that learning was my top strength, which I know, but having it played back to me as like, oh, I don't have to apologize for this. Like, this is actually just how I show up. Okay. Like it gave me so much permission to be like, I'm not looking at things from a nerdy perspective or my perspective isn't valuable because it's not this way. 
And Miranda and I were having this conversation about fun. And I was like, I could sit and look at spreadsheets or like come up with a process. And that's fun for me. Yeah. It's not weird. It's just who I am. And the more that you can find that stuff out, you don't have to apologize for it. You can just start to embrace, this is how I am. This is who I am. And this is how I work best. This is how I show up best in my relationship. This is how you're fed. So you're the, being the plant that is the water that nurtures you so when you translate that into what it's like being with a spouse and i'm not saying for you personally i'm just using Mm -hmm. the point of reference so when people are listening in and they're you're now expressing how you show up in life as as a learner you value that that's actually what feeds you Mm -hmm. so when you're looking at your spouse it's important for them to, they don't have to give it to you, but you're going to say, if you want the best from me, Mm. this is what feeds me because I finally get it. And you see how you feel that emotion behind it. Yeah. When you get it and you have that passion, you want to attach, like you always want to attach to the goodness. Like, you know, people always, uh, you know, healers always talk about, you know, I end up with these people. Yeah. Cause they're attaching to the good, the light. So all of a sudden you found the light in, in you and it wants to participate and give you more of that. Mm-hmm. So right there, you figured out in your relationship what works for you. And it's about expressing that and being okay to receive that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's so important because that's where the rubber meets the road. It's not just doing all this work and then never sharing it with anybody. Mm-hmm. The point is that we have to share it with someone. We have to mm-hmm. share it with all the people and not just our romantic relationships, mm-hmm. friendships, family relationships, all of that work relationships, which are probably some of the most difficult because we're there most of the time. Right. And so how do we do that? How do we um, embrace other people's strengths with our own and even things that frustrate us or are like, Oh, I just, I, I can't work that way. How do we figure out a way to be able to work together so that we're bringing the best of everybody to the table? Yeah. And I think we touched on this a lot throughout the episode, but that word curiosity, like, I think that's the next step of how you, how you start to bring what you're learning about yourself outwards is you're like, you be curious about you first and then take whatever curiosity you fostered in yourself and then give that away to other people. Tell me about you. This is who I am. Who are you? Right. Right. And the connection and- piece is the, it's the entire we are made for connections, right? Yes. When we feel that emotion, it goes to the brain and it connects and it brings back. So we, we're connectors. Yeah. So. Yeah, we're hardwired for it. That's it's part of our biology. I don't think we can ever stop being that. Even, even introvert, extrovert, I don't care if you want to be around people all the time or not. We need some form of connection. Absolutely. Yes, I remember I used to put on my resume in the early in my early 20s, uh, you know, appreciates working independently and in team. So being able to maneuver, you know, navigate mm-hmm. with, with my own self and and others. Because I do appreciate my independent alone time. I like being with my thoughts personally. <laughs> Get her a journal, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what a journal does? And I realized that I had spent, you know, admittedly transparency because I go back and I read, because what you focus on is what you're manifesting and what you're writing over and over again is really what has your energy. And I remember reading for, I was like, oh my gosh, I must've spent eight years writing the same story. I was like, no wonder I was stuck. I'm writing the same story. And it was, I remember opening up new books, new chapters of my life, I call them. And I remember opening up a new book and I was like, okay, my intention in this is to create a new narrative. And then I would get halfway through and I was still back to the other stuff. That program was so, I was on autopilot. It took nothing to trigger. So I'm going to add this little, this little twister into it. So when we're in our mother's rooms, our mother feels an emotion. She feels that emotion. It sends signals to the brain. The brain releases the chemical into the body and it feeds us. We come out of our mother's womb and all of a sudden we're like, okay, well, where's that chemical? Where's the, I'm addicted to it. I've only been, so we start to create events so that we can start feeling that drug rush, that chemical, that emotional, that sends a signal, lets the chemical out. We're looking for that. Mm. So what do we want? So no wonder I'm writing this. I I need my fix. It has to happen. 
So when we wake up to what that fix is means for know thyself and what that fix is for you, then Tara, as you said, it takes work <laughs> to work. change that. So yeah. much work. And sometimes you need that outside perspective, like we were talking about that sub squad of supportive people yeah. in your life who can, you can be vulnerable with and get mm -hmm. stuck in your little loops of thoughts. Right. Yeah. But they can hear it and go, I think you're stuck. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Because we can't always recognize it when we're there. So it's really helpful to have an outsider go, wait a minute, <laughs> I've heard this story before. Are we back there again? Right, right. And, it and in a loving way, because it's so nice to be able to have that. It sounds like you two have that in each other. So it's great. It's fabulous, you know, where you hold each other accountable in love. Mm -hmm. You know, I love you so much that I'm going to help you and be alongside you and just be there, the anchor for you. We're gonna get through this. It's always about the we, the collective. We're gonna get through this, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. And we try to role model that on our podcast. That's, that was really the intention behind it mm -hmm. is these conversations, although we're both coaches and we're trained in it, you can use some of the tools that we've learned to be able to go deeper mm -hmm. and be courageous, be vulnerable. Uh, and the fact that we know each other so well is like, I, I actually know you want more than that. I'm going to challenge you because I know you've told me you want more than that. You want better than this. And I'm not being mean about it. I'm just holding your standard. Yeah. yeah. That's important. It's so important. Yeah. I remember, um, getting to the point where I, I've seen enough clients to understand that it started to become really easy, at least for me in my life, to watch people identify what their program was, how they got there, where they were, but they didn't have that space to show up as the powerful individual that they are. And they didn't have space to be able to voice and say, hey, I'm great, I'm awesome, I love me. And that left a gap between transitioning from all that work that they were doing and moving into the next stage. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so important to be able to have that space and support of individuals who are comfortable hearing about the you that has emerged, the truth of who you are, mm -hmm. being able to talk in, in the language of the truth of who you are. Um, I think that's important to have that because you have to practice being the truth. Yeah, yeah. That it's the work. Absolutely. The, when those stories reemerge, it's not about shaming the person, like shame on you, you're back in that place again. It is, it's about inviting, inviting the best of them forth and being mm -hmm. like, you're better than this. You're made for more than this. Mm -hmm. shame, shame doesn't motivate anybody. No, not at, all. not at all. I like when Oprah released the shame. She's like, yeah, I'll tell you guys before anybody else does. <laughs> That's where she took her power back. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, let me just tell you, I, yeah. you know. Tabloids can't say anything about me that I haven't said about myself. <laughs> yeah. That is your, con so there, you know, that's the control, but the surrender to it, it's it's the surrender and and what I, I like about it is that there's something about you are actually more in control when you surrender and you let go you can see to it mm -hmm. yeah no that's a lot to wrap because like even when I'm thinking about the words I'm like right let go more control like I'm trying <laughs> trying to make it makes sense to me mm. but I know there's probably people watching that are like I don't even know what you are all talking about right now like how do how do we make it real for you uh well, the thing that's coming up for me is start with you mm. like start with you start with finding those things that feed you start with exploring how you can show up more confidently that nothing outside will, will make you waver. What are those things? Spend time finding out your values, mm -hmm. finding out your mission. Why are you here? What are those things that drive you? Mm -hmm. Google it. There's so many resources out there from everybody. We highly recommend Brene Brown, 
Simon Sinek is another one. Um, there's like so many great things out there, podcasts up the wazoo, right? <laughs> so do that first. If you don't start anywhere else, just start with you. And the more that you get clear about who you are, how you want to show up, what's important to you, causes you want to support, people that are with you on this journey, the letting go just comes. Yes, you're right. So you don't have to force letting go. <laughs> don't force it. It comes with confidence and it comes with knowing who you are because the other stuff just doesn't, it isn't important anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny when you say it's not important. It's not important anymore. And yes, you're right. The letting go comes when you start to do that work on you, starting with you and understanding thyself, you know, on a deeper level. It just, yeah, a lot of things just don't matter because <laughs> you start to fall in love with you. <laughs> yeah, and I think for those of us who used this time, meaning since the pandemics kind of took a hold of all of us. Um, people who have used this time to get introspective and to think on like this about what's going on in their lives, they found a gift yeah. of surrender, of not having to go to, you don't have to go to the party. You don't have to show up to the thing. You don't have to make sure that you're doing one, two, like yoga, meditation. You don't have to do it all. You can, you can do things. nothing. <laughs> you, can, you can do nothing if you want, right? If it serves you, if it makes you happy, that's your choice. Um, I get to wear stretchy pants all day long now. I don't know if I'm ever going back. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's one small thing that I've, but yeah, there, there is, um, for those of us who have been intentional during, the, as intentional as we can be during this time, I think that's so true, Tara, that the surrender just hap happens and you can go, huh. I'm not holding those things anymore. And don't I feel great? Don't I feel a lot lighter now? Yeah. And it's almost impossible to go back. So somehow something has to show up in your life that's going to be a vibrational match that is going to be in alignment for your greater and higher self in that moment. It'll show up and you won't even have to try. I know out of experience, you won't yeah. have to try. So. And if you ignore the, it, it'll show up in a different way. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've had moments in my life where I've pushed things away and it was like, there's a saying, you know, what's meant to be yours is meant to be yours. And no matter which way I pushed it, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. And to finally I surrendered and I said, I'll only do it if it's my way. And they were like, okay, it's done. And I was like, oh. <laughs> right. That was easy. Yeah. Well, it was, it was a specific, and I tell the story all the time. And it was just like, somebody had wanted me to work on a project with them. And, you know, and I said, no, I didn't have time. And, you know, had small kids and my kids are you know I was just I was busy with my kids and I flipped it in every which way which was no and they offered more money and they this and I was like nope 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 I wasn't driven by the money wasn't driven by any of that and then finally I was just like look just to get them I, I said something so ridiculous just to turn them off and they said yes and I was like oh <laughs> you know I, I really did say something I don't even tell you how ridiculous it was because my husband was like are you nuts? And I was like, no, I just, I wanted to turn them off, but I guess it was meant to be mine. I surrendered to it. I just said, okay, yeah. here, but yeah. here, are the, here, are the, here are the parameters in which I'm going to do them, knowing that they were never, they were going to say no. And they said, yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. oh. And then you were probably like, ah, uh, I should have, I should have asked for more. <laughs> no, it was ridiculous. I got <laughs> so, but uh, we got a minute left here. So any last quick, like 10 second thoughts for anybody out there? I know Tara, you had given a really good example, Miranda. Miranda, I'll leave it yeah. to you. All right. Um, well, I think for us, I just want to repeat actually what Tara said at the beginning, you know, this whole conversation was about know thyself, understand your impact on others and be in right relationship with people and be a leader in your own life. Mm, yeah. that's the world we want to live in mm -hmm. that's what we're trying to create more of and if you're with us join us because right. we would love that yeah. right so you're going to find taramiranda.com and that's no and in between so taramiranda.com you can find their podcast um, on their website you can also um, message them and contact them through through that website uh, if you're looking to 
learn how to redefine control in your life, uh, they would be happy to work with you one-on-one -on -one so that you will have the opportunity to do that. And you can also find me at thetanyaexperience.com if you're looking to take your life to the next level and really learn what it's like to have that ultimate life experience, visit Tanya, thetanyaexperience.com. Ladies, thank you for being with us this evening. Thank you guys for tuning in out there. Um, it was nice. It was peaceful. <laughs> I think we much. surrendered. Did we surrender? Yes. Well, I did. I, I, <laughs> I, I feel very, I feel like I'm in a spa right now. Okay. <laughs> delightful, delightful yes. conversation. Yes, it has been. So thank you, ladies. Have a good evening and we'll talk soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank, Bye -bye. thank you.